Oh my. These incarnate weapons are getting better and better as we dive into each and every new week of their release. And the Dual Toxicist is a prime example of exactly what I mean by that. I mean, this gun was already strong, but it's like that athletic guy that you once knew who you didn't see for a couple of years. Then you meet again in your local butchery shop and all of a sudden he's discovered his pre-workout juice and he has no plans to stop or any goals or anything that he sets in front of him. Yeah, buff Toxicist. That's what we all wanted and here it is. Now my semi has gone fully. Yeah. Alrighty then, here's what you need to know. Where do you get the Incarnate from? The Viri Paradox, Steel Path, Circuit Game Modes. You can select two out of five weekly rotating incarnate weapons to choose from. This week's dual toxicist is up for grabbing. Go get it, Tiger. What evolution should you take? Evolution one. For incarnate Genesis weapons, they are always given to you. This is because this would be your way to transmute and evolve the weapon during combat. So let's just move on. Evolution two. Increase your damage by 60 and get a 33% damage increase per status type affecting the target. Or increase your damage by 50, but on every and each ability cast will build up your weapon's multi shot by 5% each time, increasing up to a maximum of 20 stacks for 100% percent multi shot and this has no duration it's a permanent build up each mission that you go into now multi shot will always and arguably be best in slot for whenever it comes to enhancing your primary or secondary weapons within warframe so i will be going for this and keep in mind that in order to benefit from it i will have to use warframe abilities but that's fine by me as for the other option it's basically a version of a galvanized mod similar to the understanding of condition overload the more elemental procs and types that you have on the enemy you're attacking the more damage that you you can scale with it. However, if you are using the Galvanized Shot mod within your builds, then the increased damage would be diminishing returns here. Hence why the multi shot option would just be better for myself. Otherwise, if you don't have the Galvanized mod to go and select from, then this works great to increase some damage because status chance of this weapon means that your proc elements left, right, and center. So go ahead and take it if you need it. Evolution 3. Get a 100% increase to your weapon when you have no ammo left in the magazine. Have your magazine reload itself whenever holstered over time. Or gain better recoil control for your weapon. So with these options in mind, I'm going to go ahead and say that they can all be debated on. And boy, oh boy, on my live stream did we debate. But let's go ahead and keep it simple for the video. So here's my rundown. Take the first option if you are a player who's missing headshots often. It will just help you. Take the second option if you are doing something niche, like speedrunning, for example. And take the third option if you're looking for an overall increase to basically everything that you do. There. It's easier to understand. They can all work. I went with recall for my evolution choice and builds. Moving on, we got evolution four. In an additive critical chance of 20%, on headshot gain a 70% toxin hit for three seconds, or on kill gain plus three punch through. Why well, spend time going through these and going over builds and ideas that could potentially work? My goodness, did I? But I'm going to keep this short and sweet to help keep the pace with the current flow right now. First option, in my opinion, it's the best option. There's very little downside to take in this and overall it adds much more enjoyable route to mod for with criticals headshots and that fully automatic gameplay that this new incarnate offers the second option is a 70 percent toxin mod basically so if you took this option with no mods on your gun and you hit a headshot you would basically do toxin damage and whatever status chance that you have to proc a toxin proc on hit so think of it like that. Although I do think it's good, I feel like the critical is better, so I didn't pick this. And for the final option, if you aren't planning to do lots of end game scaling activities, then this is nice for general usage within the Steel Path Star Chart, because it just adds quality of life to your builds. And again, this weapon is super powerful. So you could take this if you wanted to, but I wanted to go further and beyond with damage and scaling, so I didn't choose this option either. What does the Evolve Shot look like? A semi-automatic gone fully automatic. No more point and clicks anymore, my friends. Instead, rain barrage on your enemies with high fire rate and absolutely deplete any living existence in front of you, just not your teammates. What build should you take? Absolutely no joke when I say this, so let me be abundantly clear. That means you. Yes, you. Do you hear me out? Right. Now, there are quite a few different ways to go mod this weapon, and all of them do so damn well. You can literally throw a multi shot and it would still destroy Steel Path missions. Yes, that's just genuinely how good this gun is, all right? So, with that in mind, here's my build and what I ended up taking damage, because every build needs damage to push it further. Select whatever mods you desire, throw it in, and it'll do more damage. Whoa, that's Build Crafting 101 with Clonk. Multi shot, save your ammo consumption and create more damage instances. Enemies won't know what hit them. 
Criticals. This is paired with the evolution route that I took. Otherwise, if you didn't take that route, then don't take this. But bitches love criticals. Orange numbers and red numbers. So we went with this. Elementals. Now, I ended up with corrosive for bonus elemental damage to ferrite armor and a little bit of armor stripping. But that second point wasn't the main focus. Although viral would be adding a lot more scale into it, I feel I'll be doing it a disservice because I wanted to go and put the galvanized scope in here and viral complements better with faction mods double dipping off it, especially since our weapon has a neat slash. You could take that route if you want to, but I just wanted raw damage and this raw damage still scales very well. As for the arcanes, I personally felt deadhead was the more obvious choice here because dual toxis has a neat passive to headshots that when shot, activates a frenzy buff, increasing your fire rate by 150, your ammo efficiency by 100, reduces recoil, and you gain a 100% toxin damage to the weapon. So with that in mind, plus the galvanized scope mod that I took, I thought it all paired and meshed in pretty well. And finally, the Exilislar. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys, there's not many great choices here, but I went with the ADS movement speeds. You can go recoil if you really need it. But otherwise, I carefully went over the other options, and I'd rather take Sprite Sights for now. The dual Tox Assist in Karnan will go down as one of the best secondary weapons to add to your arsenal without a doubt. And that's also keeping in mind that this week's weapon choices were damn hard to pick from because without much prior experience to all of the builds in the gameplay that we already have today, on paper, they all look crispy. So, how was your day? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I'm so sorry to hear that. But if it makes you feel any better, I want you to get up off that chair go look in that mirror, stare straight into those big googly blinking moon of yours and say out loud, hey, today was bad, but at least I'm not Clark.